Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto. I'm bringing out a bite-sized piece. So today, just like the thumbnail suggests, everything changes for Bitcoin in seven days as it becomes the legal tender officially for El Salvador. So we'll take a look at what that means and what the ramifications are for the El Salvadorian people on top of what that means globally when this all works out. On top of that, we'll take a look at uh, Cardano smart contracts are going live on the test net tomorrow, and they'll be going live completely in September 12th. And then finally, we'll take a look at uh, pro baseball or major league baseball or MLB here in the United States is going to be minting NFTs through Topps cards, and it's not on the platform that you may think it's going to be. So we'll take a look at all those things, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market today. Not too bad, uh, almost 2.1 trillion. Uh, we're just kind of fluctuating in that area, so not a big deal. I'm just happy that it actually held and I'm actually pretty ecstatic about uh, you know what's going on leading into September and all this good news. Daily sentiment drops a little bit, 46 out of 100, and we're using trade the chain for sentiment analysis, just so you know. And then as far as like coins and price goes, two of the biggest winners uh, today in 24 hours, well, XRP is up 3%, watch out, 14% for Polkadot and uh, Solana was on a tear this morning, but it's just uh, equaling out, but still looking pretty good. Hex is down 2% that 12th spot. So good for all you hexologists. I know you guys love it when I even mention the word hex. Hex, hex. Chainlink is at 5%, uh, 2% 2 for Stellar. And again, this is uh, the trade the chain sentiment analysis. So if we big into uh, sentiment, I mean, if you're big into trading, I mean, it's great to have no technical analysis and also fundamental anal analysis, but it's also good to have uh, the trifecta in your toolbox, which is sentiment analysis. So over the next hour, uh, look for these to really shoot up. Uh, Rarity governance token, DeFi money, scale, waves, keep network, Grin and Orion Protocol. Interesting. So that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's uh, top story. And uh, we're going to go, we're just going to talk about this, El Salvador. And everybody was super excited about this. And I'm still super excited about it. And I really kind of just fell to the wayside. But I think we really need to realize that, hey, in a week, this is going to happen. And the entire government is going this way. Now, how big is El Salvador? Well, uh, the total population is uh, 6.45. And then there's different numbers that, that go through there. We're talking about children and, uh, you know, out of age adults or whatnot. So we'll say around between 4.5 and 6.45, depending on uh, what you're counting. So not a small country. And they uh, actually just released this uh, today, matter of fact, on Twitter. And it talks about, actually, I'm sorry, yesterday. And it talks about uh, what's going to happen on the 7th of, of September. Now, uh, it's all in Spanish. Uh, my Spanish, I'm better at speaking Spanish than understanding Spanish. I was much better at that here in El Paso. But uh, real quick, this is what's going on uh, for the, the piece. And I'll just say like this. That pretty much what they're saying is, hey, look, it's going to go live on September 7th. You can have Bitcoin or cash. They can kind of roll in whatever else. You can buy whatever you want. And you're going to put it on this. I'm gonna, let me blow this up so you can see what I see. This is the Chivo, C-H-I-V-O app. And what it's talking about here is it's saying, hey, we want you to use this app. And you can use pretty much whatever app that you want to. And we're going to keep this going for uh, prices, dollars, and pensions. That'll be in, in U.S. dollars. But for everything else, you can use the Chivo app. And that's what it's going to be as far as like transferring and getting paid in Bitcoin. You can, when you get paid in Bitcoin, you can immediately transfer it over. That's fine. You can use whatever different app that you want in Bitcoin. But if you use the government official Chivo app, we're going to give you $30. Now, I, in an article we're going to look at pretty soon, it says $30 in Bitcoin. In the video, it sounds like it's just $30 US dollars in Bitcoin or $30 USD. Whatever it is, let me just tell you this. If you are living in El Salvador, okay, and someone says, I want to give you 30 bucks just to use this app. Well, we have that here in the States. We have it, you know, for Voyager. We have it for Coinbase. I mean, ah, not Coinbase. Binance and things like that. Well, not even Binance. Well, Binance US, I suppose. Uh, all the different ones that are out there. But if you're in El Salvador and uh, your gross income per capita uh, in 2019 is $4,000. And someone says, I'm going to give you 30 bucks just to use this app. I'm pretty sure you're going to use it. R regardless if it is the government app or not, 30 bucks is 30 bucks and you're making four grand a year. That's all I'm saying. So I think that was a smart move on El Salvador's part. And they're going, hey, look, 
uh, use our app and we can track everything that you do on the blockchain. And uh, that's just, that's really what it comes down to. And again, it just talks about you can do, you know, buy whatever you want to and so on and so forth. So um, also in the video, it talks about how you're able to, uh, there's no uh, fees to process the payment. There's no fees for remittances. And I think that's the big thing of why they're doing it. They're like, look, if you want to send uh, money back to your family here in El Salvador, just send it on the Chivo app uh, and you can just send it without any type of like Western Union crazy high fees or Wells Fargo crazy or whatever banks that are over there because you know they charge crazy high fees just for remittance payments. So I think uh, this is going to go uh, swimmingly well. Now the thing that I, that concerns me personally is uh, what is going to actually have to go on when we're talking about um, with the IMF. And I, here is talking about remittance payments again. So. Let me just move forward. The, the thing that I was questioning actually was how much is actually did El Salvador actually purchase for Bitcoin? Because they have to purchase Bitcoin for everything to be sold and purchased and everything else. And then, of course, they're going to pay people in Bitcoin. So this is from the Daily Hodel and says El Salvador to buy an estimated 135 million worth of Bitcoin. And this was uh, back on June 27th. So right away, this has already been priced in. This isn't the big thing. This isn't the big thing. Uh, it does say here, if all four and a half million Salvadorians opt to receive the free Bitcoin, it could instantly grow the Bitcoin user network by two and a half percent. According to the president, one of the central reasons is introducing Bitcoin as legal tender, of course. So when you have something like this, the big thing that it really comes down to is all different types of countries in Central America, South America, poor third world countries, as you call them, they're going to look at this pretty hard and they're going to say, look, if we can have a lot of our, a lot of our citizens who are completely unbanked, if they're able to get into Bitcoin and just use an app and then be able to store wealth in an app, as opposed to going to the bank where they have all the fees, where they're not actually doing much for our citizens anyhow, I think we're going to go for this on top of the fact that if you have people who move out of our country and they go throughout the world into other countries, other countries like the United States, like Canada, wherever else, uh, in any part in the, in the EU, and they are sending money back to family, friends, relatives, whatever else, and uh, it's crazy high remittance fees. Well, let's just have them do that in Bitcoin and uh, for no fees, as opposed to using a bank, doing a wire transfer, spending 20, 30, 50, whatever, how many dollars it actually is, waiting all that time to actually go through. And oh, not to mention the fact that there's also a failure rate for remittance payments. So as you send all the money back to your family and they're like, oh, we didn't receive it. That's kind of a problem. So I think what's going to happen is that everybody's going to take a look at this. If this works out pretty well, you're going to see mass adoption in all types of countries. And they're gonna take a look, a real hard look at this. And if that happens, what do you think is gonna to happen to the price of Bitcoin? And not just Bitcoin, maybe other cryptocurrencies and digital assets as people are like, why do we need these central banks? And uh, why do we need all these different uh, banks that are just pretty much robbing uh, our citizens of money here and there? And then not to mention the fact about DeFi, decentralized finance, digital IDs and everything else. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece where we talk about Cardano smart contracts. So uh, in a nutshell, there was a great video. It was put out uh, by IOHK. And what it talks about here is everything that's going to go on uh, tomorrow and until September 12th, all about uh, smart contracts. So let's just take a listen real quick. Well, let's start with where we are right now. Plutus is ready. The Daedalus wallet is ready. Everything is all packaged up, and as of now, it's been confirmed that we are ready to hard fork to the Cardano testnet on Wednesday, September 1st. Once we've hard forked the testnet, then we can start testing everything that was inside that package we just updated in a live production environment. We'll be running our own tests and inviting others to test as well, with the main goal being to test for stability, security, testing that the foundational code to write smart contracts is working properly, and all the other miscellaneous things that need to be done to ensure that we can confidently hard fork to the mainnet. This is also the time in which 140 exchanges will be switching from Alonzo Purple to a live production environment in preparations for the mainnet launch. So when is the mainnet hard fork? It's currently set for Sunday, September 12th. 
And this gives our testnet partners roughly a week and a half to ensure that everything is running correctly and there are no fundamental bugs or issues that, for security reasons, could mean the date needs to get pushed back. So that's where it said right there. And these are interesting times. So what's going to happen? Tomorrow, testnet. Going to give it a, about a week, week and some change to see if they can break anything as they invite more people in. And if they can do all their checks and balances and make it to the end and go, yes, all the things that we did, all these peer-reviewed papers, all the testing that we've done, all the time that we've taken, and now we're at that finish line and we've tested it rigorously. Yes, now we can go live with the mainnet launch on September 12th. If they can do that, and this happens, expect the price of Cardano to skyrocket. This is just investment opinion, not investment advice. Do not put your life savings and sell your kidneys to put it all in Cardano just because some YouTuber said that the price might go up on a main net launch. But for me, I can tell you, this is part of the end of a very long journey for Cardano. And we'll see if they can do exactly what they said they could do. And this is on top of the fact that Charles came out uh, just last week and said, look, we had a go, no go uh, meeting, round robin, table, round robin table meeting, and all our checks and balances went green light, green light, green light, all things that we thought could go wrong, did not go wrong. And we are pushing forward to the test net. Here we are the test net. We're gonna push forward and hopefully main net launches for smart contracts, which could lead us into DEXs, and decentralized finance. Imagine what that would look like. All right, so that is that issue for Cardano. Also, I found a little piece. I'm going to actually uh, link this in. Uh, this was from Pat at Amdreamer, and he talks about Cardano wealth distribution. Let me blow this up so you can see it. And it's all about the amount of wallets that people have and how much Cardano they're actually holding. And I got to tell you, if I'm looking at this uh, pretty correctly, we've got a lot of people with just a thousand to ten thousand, ten thousand to a hundred thousand, you know, nineteen, twenty-six percent, but it really drops off after that. There's not like, you know, four wallets that control like fifty percent of everything. This is a pretty looking good decentralized type of wallets. Now, it is true that uh, some people like myself have more than one wallet floating around. Maybe you got three, five, twenty. I have no idea. But just to take a look at this, you can take a look at other projects, and there's still wallets five, six, or seven that control the majority of all the different tokens. And that, my friends, is not a good plan because all those people can just start dumping. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And let's move on to our last piece, pro baseball and NFTs. And this was a, just a quick one. It's uh, Tops. Tops and Bales. Tops is when I was a kid, I used to collect baseball cards. And Tops was like the only, you know, player around they've been they've been with the uh major league baseball for two decades plus and uh they are saying hey we're gonna do uh, an nft series now minted on avalanche blockchain so real quick i'll just wrap this all up tops is averaging average avalanche blockchain after the company was using the uh wax blockchain for projects like garbage pail kids which is something i remember as a kid too and godzilla series and then it says, uh, the site removes the need, this is the uh, top site, removes the need for special wallets or token apps and provides a single location to buy, sell, and explore official licensed TOPS NFT collection. Here's the website itself. So we actually did a deep dive deep dive on Avalanche. And I said it's, it was going to be big. Uh, we I've been... I've been delving into this for over six weeks and I finally got uh, one of the team members, uh, Jay Kurahashi Sofu on, and uh, we went over everything that has to do with uh, Avalanche and why I think it could be great. But one of the big things that I talked about was that they're doing a twofer, a twofold bifurcation. They are looking for to get into heavy into the private blockchain sector, retail people like you and me, and also the private blockchain sector, governments, Fortune 500 companies and stuff like this. So when you have something like like them going after two different ways, that's uh, double, <laughs> double your pleasure, double your fun, because they can dip into much more of a market than say another different type of cryptocurrency who's only doing public blockchains. And hey, uh, I know people don't like it, but uh, guess what? Sometimes uh, government and uh, Fortune 500 companies have stuff they don't want to reveal. So maybe they need like a little private blockchain. I think there's room enough for everybody. Anyhow. Uh, that is it for that that section. Also, if you want to take a look at uh, the deep dive, I'll link that in the link in the description below. Also, just so you know, over on uh, danteachescrypto.com, uh, if you just scroll over to staking up here, they were two. We have two staking pools, Cardano and AVAX. And if you go to AVAX, it talks about how to actually stake 
uh, with the Avalanche blockchain. It's pretty simple. The only problem is, is that they have lockup periods between two weeks, two months, six months, a year, but it is a lockup period, just so you know, and I explain all that in the video right down here. So that's it. So look, uh, that's it for today. And uh, if you made it all the way to the end, I wanna say, first of all, thanks for sticking with me all the way, I appreciate it. If you like that type of video and uh, you found some value, give it a thumbs up, that helps tremendously. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for right now. So thanks so much for watching, I appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.